there anything else? What did you mean when you said you have advantages? At the risk of sounding like a lunatic, reality is much more fluid than you It can be influenced. I didn't take you for a mystic. I'm not. I'm a writer. And under certain conditions, I can, for lack of a better word, rewrite reality. Change things. That's absurd. Maybe, maybe not. Assuming I believe this, why don't you simply, I don't know, write yourself some superpowers? There are rules. It's not quite that simple. You need to follow certain laws of drama, I suppose. You need to think about consistency and symbolism. Often what you write isn't anywhere near as important as what you imply. Ah, things out this there is going crazy. Advantage of your mistakes. I you might really keeps jostling. This? Don't look at me like that. You've experienced some of this yourself. I will gladly admit that something exceedingly strange is going on. But this idea that you're somehow altering reality with your writing is ridiculous. You're essentially saying you're controlling my actions. Leaving aside Not really the controlling them, more like this, guiding them. The right. Well, it's more like having a destiny. A path you're on. You're not aware of it, but there it is. If somebody changes it, what difference does it make? It's what every writer does. If you write something that affects one of the characters, they don't really know about that. I'm not a character. Are you saying that it's all right to take advantage of someone if they aren't aware of it? Look, all I meant was that if you're genuinely making all your own decisions and those decisions lead to whatever destiny you have, what practical difference does it make? I suppose that depends on whether our destinies are determined by things like physics and probabilities or natural reality, which is presumably neutral and impartial or by some kind of an intelligence. If it's the latter, that intelligence makes choices based on some criteria. If we suffer as a result of those choices, there's a moral and ethical element involved, regardless of whether we're aware of its manipulations. Wouldn't you agree? I... You're taking this very well. I thought you'd be hangry. Yeah. I suppose I would be if I thought you could actually do this. And that's everything, so we just need to pick up the printout. Another printout. Another signal fragment. The message is still not complete, but it's another piece of the weapon he has built against his adversary. Mere words on a piece of paper, but in the right hands, they will hold back the darkness. And now we go to the drive-in for the second time. Yep, Night Springs Drive-In Theater, Arizona. The last time the man came to the drive-in, it did not end well. He hopes to avoid that fate this time. He hopes that what he has brought with him to this place is enough. Maybe, maybe not, but... There was something I forgot to do. Catch up on some of these uh, observatory pages. Read through them. Well, read through them up until Fragment 2. So, from the darkness to Fragment 2. The darkness rose from the depths of Cauldron Lake and took Alice. It needed words. It needed me to write its way into our world. She was leverage. A hostage. I complied, but with a twist. I put in a loophole that gave me a chance to fight back. I was hunted by shadowy enemies, but I faced the darkness. I fought it with light. I drove it back. I saved Alice, but it came with a cost. I was trapped in the dark place below Cauldron Lake. There we go. Now what about in After the dark my place? disappearance, they thought I was dead. I might as well have been. I know it's been two years. I know Alice has moved on. I've tried to find a way back to her. Back to my life, but escaping the dark place is almost impossible. Time does strange things here, but dreams and radio signals can pierce the veil between the worlds. I catch glimpses and echoes of the world. Sometimes I send messages out. I can only pray that they hear them. Okay, now the nature of stories. Stories come naturally to us. We can't help it. There are many different worlds, many competing realities within our heads, fueled by books television, even barely remembered childhood tales. There's an endless supply of fictional concepts more familiar to us than anything or anyone real. We have a far greater connection to the fictional characters we know and love 
than the random people we pass on the street. Our destinies and inspirations are shaped by lies, myths, and fables. Yep. Can't say anything more true than that. There are places where our world is worn thin, and another reality brushes against ours. One such site is Cauldron Lake near Bright Falls, Washington. But there are others. That other reality is dark, vast, and malleable, always in flux. In its depths dwell vast forces and alien energies. They're dangerous. But in one of these places, if you know how, you can channel the power of that place and use it to shape reality. Okay. The Taken may well be the tool the darkness favors over any other. At some point, they used to be human, but whatever humanity they once had is long gone. Now they're just shells covered and filled by darkness. The Taken Mr. <laughs> throws at me are more grotesque and varied than the ones I first encountered in Bright Falls. But I know how to deal with them. I'd be lying if I said they don't frighten me. But I've survived worse. I can't let them stop me. Now tell me a bit about Dr. Meadows. When Dr. Rachel Meadows got the call from Michael, telling her to hurry to the observatory, she didn't waste any time. It had been a nice party. She'd had a good time, but her social life would always play second fiddle to the mysteries of space. Michael never showed up, of course. He pulled over at the wrong rest stop. She never even thought about him at the time. The phenomenon in the sky above her was too fascinating. And what is the second the fragment? The film noir poster reminded me of Alex Casey. The detective's cool exterior never cracking even with the gun pointed in his face. In the back room, all the lights had been turned off. Except for the lone spotlight which illuminated the bright red fire extinguisher on the wall. Okay, that tells us what we have to do once we get into the, uh, the projector room. Ugh. Serena's probably out of her mind again, but I'm gonna need that key so I can get the power back on. Yep. You again? I'm really just here to get the key so I can get the power back on. You wanna hold me down? It's okay. I know you like that. No. Yeah, I'll just grab the keys. I could be like your wife, little wifey, waiting at home for hubby. Or you could be the mailman. Or the neighbor. <laughs> I'm already married to someone who isn't crazy, thanks. Yeah. I'm just gonna go and get the power back on. Aww. Look, I may or may not be back. I have the access code to the booth already, so once the power is on... You should totally come see me. We could have fun. You know. We'll see how it goes. You should sit down or something. Try to stay calm. I don't want to be calm. I want to be nasty. I want to be nasty with you. Yeah. Right. Okay. You could do anything you want. You can use my... Let's not even go there. <laughs> I was hoping that you'd remember more, but I guess that was too much to ask. Yes. Ammo and batteries and... Well, radio. I was about to do the weather, but uh, I see we have... Uh, hey, you're on the air with Eddie. What's up? Hey, Eddie, it's Ricky. You're talking about fate before. You think about that a lot? Not a lot, to be honest, but uh, I take it you do. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Any conclusions you'd care to share, uh, Ricky? Well, we've got free will, right? That's in the Bible and everything. Yeah, right, sure. So free will, right? Am I right? I mean, if we can do what we want, how can there be fate? I mean, you don't know what's going to happen next, so there's no fate. There's just people doing stuff. Well, so I, might look I at don't it. know, Ricky. I don't suppose you have considered the possibility that we're all here in the service of a greater purpose, incomprehensible to us, and that what we take to be freedom is nothing more than the move of a pawn on some cosmic chessboard. That's the narrator. Limited in scope, subject to the whims of unseen players, existing only for their entertainment. Or perhaps we're just a twisted reflection of actual events that can happen elsewhere. Could it be that such is life in Night Springs? Um, dude, what? Food for thought. Yeah. Food for thought. That's kind of freaky. 
I don't think I'd heard that one before. Anyways, let's go get that power back on. Actually, first, let's see. Let's take a look at these. Uh, I'm missing a lot of pages from here. You know what? We'll hold off on taking a look at the drive through pages right now. Oh, there's Scratch. Whoa, crap. Ow. There we go. We've got light over here. Heal up. There we go. Okay, now let's get going. I see a TV blinking in the distance there. Oh, great. Across the drive in parking lot. Well, that's not good. Ow! I tried to dodge them, but it didn't work. Ah, oh, come on! I tried to dodge again and it didn't work. What the hell happened? Okay, I have to do this again. There we go, that's one down. There we go. Okay, let's keep going. We got a TV here. What's Mr. Scratch gonna say for us now? I want to talk about Alice. Uh oh. Just look at her. She's really beautiful, isn't she? Your wife. Well, our wife, really. <laughs> Just my wife soon. Don't worry. I'm not going to treat her like the others. She's special. If I wanted her dead, she would be. I've been around for a while now. Okay. So talented. You haven't seen her new work, of course. Oh, it takes my breath away. Really, she's that good. Oh. Did you know that I've got a wedding ring, too? We're that similar. Huh. She's seen me a couple times, you know. I've let her catch glimpses. She thinks she's imagining things, of course. She thinks you're dead. It might as well be. I mean, even if you manage to keep surviving, you'll be in my trap forever. So I'll go to her. It'll be an amazing moment. Oh my god. You're alive. I'll be the good, loving husband for as long as I can stand it. She'll love it. And then, one day, somehow, it'll happen. Maybe I'll slip up, she spots something, or maybe she just starts running her mouth. And then... I'll do it. It's going to be sweet. <sighs> My darling wife. Right. Like, that's not creepy at all. Okay. Ooh, flare gun ammo. Yay. No, I really haven't been using those. Flare guns. Uh, let's see. Which way? This way. If 
I remember correctly. 